Bingo. <laughs> I heard that on your end. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I, I think, like completely discombobulated with just from turning the clock. I had an hour. Does this happen to you guys too? Yes. 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 That's yes. why we're we're drinking coffee. I got my Lots baby coffee. Baby Jane mug here. I have her ooh la la mug here. So you know. Yes. Yeah. Straight from Puerto Rico. Mm. Nice. Not me, the mug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Straight from Portland, Maine. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you about that, Chris, because I've talked to Linda before and I kind of know her story a little bit more than I know your story. So, you uh -huh. know what? That's a good place to start. Did you actually grow up in Portland, Chris? Um, I started like a uh, high school in Port in Portland area. Yeah. So basically, yes. The answer would be yes. Are you from Maine, though? Um, as a, as a child, the family moved around from place to place, New York, California, oh. Jersey, Nebraska, you know, moved around and then, uh, settled in Maine. Where, where were you born? In Massachusetts. Really? Like you know Boston? Uh, Quincy. Quincy, right? You know, there's a lot of punk rockers and garage rockers from Quincy. Yeah, right? that's so, Quincy. yeah. Restority <laughs> territory, I call it. Uh, and, and the Barton brothers, who we were talking about there from Quincy, too. So um, so you moved they up. They used to play at a place called the Downtown Lounge um, in Portland. Like, I think it was probably around like 79 and 80. The outlets would come up and they were like awesome. They were like, they were great. I love that band. Yeah, yeah, one of my favorites, without a doubt. Um, yeah. so so you you moved up there and you went to high school in Portland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was that like for you? Did were you playing or at that time were you into music or? No, uh, I pretty much started playing like after high school. Like, um, I went to um school in um, Lewiston, and um, my uh, boyfriend Richard owned a, a record store called the wax museum and that's where we met and uh he was totally inspirational in like um showing me all kinds of like new music and um, when i was in school it was like oh i wanted to like uh play in a band so i uh, went to the pawn shop and found this awesome guitar um my baldwin guitar it's pictured on the uh still in, in spite of it all record cover yep i still have it and love to play it um, so anyway, got a guitar, learned how to play it, um, formed a few bands, um, and then the brood came around in like the early 80s, and um, all girl, um, 60s garage inspired. Band. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask you about the brood in a second, but first I want to ask you, when you were in high school and when you were hanging out at the records, doing all that stuff that you mentioned, yeah. um, did you, what, what kind of music were you listening to at that time? Um, I think, well, pre-record store, the, I thought the radio really sucked and I would always kind of like listen to like the oldies stations. Like I liked older music, like old rock and roll, like Little Richard and Fats Domino mm -hmm. and Jerry Lee. And then I would even go back farther than that. Like I liked kind of old jazz, like, um, Louis Armstrong and all that kind of like twenties and thirties jazz um, big spider back, stuff like that. And then, um, then at the record store, Richard, um, brought like, um, punk rock records to, uh, Maine. So he was like in touch with bump records and rough trade overseas and all these labels and stuff. And so he had, he was like a collector's record store. So he sold mostly, well, a mix of new and used records, which was fairly new concept at the time and imported a lot of 45s and just like was really into the music so um like ramones and sex pistols and early punk stuff and then it's like the years went on and like a lot of great stuff was released but then to me like later on as more and more bands started doing it the um, music kind of got a little more watered down and um, i guess homogenous and i didn't like that so I kind of started going back and I really got into like the 60s garage thing because there were so many great like teen bands mm -hmm. and it's just they had like the energy, which I really like the energy and the uh, soul and the feeling of it all. So I was just like got really into that. So 
it makes sense that you two are together because you know Linda's from Detroit, so I always call that one of the garage rock, you know, oh, yeah. in the world. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. I was just uh, real quick. I was talking to somebody on Facebook. My brother, my older brother, who's uh, deceased now, he got me into rock and roll, and he would tell me stories. He used to go to the Grandy Ballroom, like late '60s, early '70s, before I was born, and check out all the you know new bands that would come yeah. through. He saw Bob Seger at the Kimball Ice Arena in Royal Oak. That's where I'm from. For fifty cents. There was a whole, there was a whole <laughs> um, excellent um, thread on Facebook about this, about Bob Seger in his early days. Yeah. Bob Seger uh, system. Yeah. 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 And yeah. even before that, the Bob Seger herd, H E R D, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like he was into psychedelic, he dressed up, yeah. you know, in suede and, you know, Sergeant Peppery. And that literally, his early shows yeah. were like less than two miles from my house growing up in Royal Oak it's they're classic and I'm just you know I'm like my brother was right yeah uh -huh, he was really uh -huh. like hanging out and you know like doing this early stuff which is so cool I think we talked when we talked before we talked about Royal Oak because I think Amy Gore lived there when I went to her house she lived in Royal Oak I'm pretty sure and there was a cool record store there too that um yeah, so you guys, it makes sense that you two got connected with each other. And we're going to get to that in a second. The Brood had four albums on four dif uh, three different labels, Sky right. Cloud, Estrus, and the label I could never say right, which is your label, and I'm going to try and say it, Dionysus. Not, see, I, I fucked it up oh, again. Oh, oh, guess again. Oh. Try again. Dionysus. 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 The god of uh, wine, women, and song. Yes. There you go. I say it wrong every time, but I'm good for saying it. Uh, and I know that label because there's a million records on it. Um, yeah. You had a really good run with The Brood. For how many years would you say the band was around for? How many years? Yeah. I think like 17. 17 years. 80, I think basically it's like 83 to 2000. Wow. Yeah. And those are all good labels, too. Yeah. <laughs> Real good. And I guess you kept the one that you wanted for yourself and, and you're still on that label. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lee is a big fan of like girls and 60s and pop. So it was like pretty easy, you know. That sounds familiar, actually. Um, <laughs> well, you while well, you were doing that, Linda was doing Fabulous Disaster, Inside Out and other bands. And do you, were you guys aware of each other? I definitely knew Chris for sure. Um, through uh, through a German oh, yeah. compilation, a record that came out that somebody gave me, um, and it was on white and blue like marble vinyl, and I took it home. I was in Germany. I was playing and touring in Germany, and I came back, and I'm like, whoa, like The Brood, and there was another band called The Blue Up. Yeah. They were from Minneapolis, I think. And a couple other bands, like an all-girl band from Australia. And I just love the vibe of them. And this was like before the internet. Um, so when I moved out in 2012, I totally knew a Chris. I'm like, man, I'd like to hook up with somebody from The Brood. Um, you know, and it turned out that it yeah. happened. Yeah. That's um, I was going to ask you about that. I, did you originally <laughs> tell me when, when you moved to Portland, though, that you weren't really looking to get into a band it just kind of happened or were you looking to get into a band uh when I first came out here I pretty much wanted to quit music because I had such a not a very good experience with my last California band which I won't get into uh -huh. um but it wrecked a friendship and it really bummed me out and I was like uh you know maybe I need a break or whatever and six months went by I'm like okay I have to record something so I recorded a few demos and then I started putting my feelers out, you know, and there were a few girls at first that didn't work out. And then a mutual fan friend hooked Chris and I up. He said, oh, I know the perfect girl. I'm like, oh, my God. Woo yeah. He went to each of us and told each of us about the other. And then, right, we um, got in touch yeah. with each other and met. And it was yeah. like it was magic. Sure was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was it your intention? We knew from the start. We knew from the start. But yeah. was it your intention, Linda, to form an all-girl band? Oh, yeah. It was. Yeah, absolutely. Had yeah. enough of the guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, that last one. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm usually in, I usually 
you know, um, write music with women. I just, I've always had that kinship, you know, um, ever since I was 15 yeah. or 16. It's like a different dynamic. It is, you know? Yeah. Some people can't handle it. Some people don't want it, you know, and I just, it's for me. Uh, I'll say that. So hey, yeah. I have a long history be, after I worked for labels, when I started managing bands, I have a long history of working with bands, especially with female singers, most of which you guys know. And I think Tiger Bomb played with the Love Me Nots and the Charms, both of them. And the Gorgor Girls, you probably. You oh, know, yeah. Too, oh, yeah. Cage, Cage Teat was another band that I managed with a female singer, you know, Boston yes. band. But um, I so I dig that. So so you so how did it happen? Did, was there an ad or was it uh, someone introduced you? I mean, yeah, it yeah. was uh, someone introduced us. Um, can I say his name? Richie Rotten. He's <laughs> out there somewhere. Um, he kind of disappeared off of Facebook. But um, yeah, he put me in touch with Chris and we. Um, talked for a little bit on Facebook and then she came over, you know, bought some records. She had a couple of songs. I had a couple of songs and yeah, it just, it, it, it kind of formed from there. Um, and you know, we had, uh, we had a couple different drummers until we found Jessica Smith, who's our current drummer and she's amazing. She's one of the most amazing musicians I've worked with. Yeah. Uh, true blue and just she actually likes to play. She loves to play. A drummer <laughs> who actually shows up on time, loves to play. Don't ask me how that happened, but it did. So, yeah. It was just only a couple. Yesterday, I did a few interviews in, in Cambridge, but th last week, I interviewed Lori Barbero from uh, Babes in Toyland. Talk about a drummer that likes to play. Oh, yeah. I, I, when, when you guys first started, was it 2014? Yeah. I think it was. Yes, yeah. it was 2014. Yeah. Did you go through a lot of drummers before you settled with Jessica? No, just two, two drummers. And every the bass player's been there all along. Uh, no, we had Andrea for many years, and now we have uh, Amanda. Amanda, uh, sorry, yeah. Amanda joined last year. Yeah, she's a great fit. She loves rock and roll. She's a huge music fan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she played with Chris and the Brood, what, in the oh, nice. late 90s? The late, yeah, the late 90s. Yeah. Yeah. So she played the bass and the organ in the late, later years of the Brood. No, I might be wrong. Not at the same time. You, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but you're a little more towards the punk side, Linda, and you're a little more towards the garage side, Chris. Am I right about that? But you kind of mashed it together. Well, um, you know, I do love the punk, but I also I'm a big fan of the the California pop. So I have to say that the you know um, the, the pop punk right is I'd, more I'd, yeah I'd say like the direction does seem to be leaning more towards the pop and um, what is the word like the, like the power pop power pop. and even like yes. we've we've even kind of like dipped our toes into the realm of bubble gum a little bit. <laughs> You know, like I think when we started, my concept was like mod and glam and just like um, with the pop thrown in and some garage. And it's just kind of like, you know, like um, undergone like a little bit of transformation over the years. Like, but uh, yeah, I think we lean towards garage pop with harmonies. That's well, the reason I said punk is because Fabulous Disaster to me is was more of a punkier band, you know? Yes, pop punk. Um, yes, yeah. Now, sure. now you mentioned, um, and I love that genre, punk, pop punk. I've worked with so many bands like that. That's my favorite. I just talked to Joe Sib recently, who was in Wax and Twenty Two Jacks. I don't know if you know those bands. California poppy punk. Definitely was it? Didn't he? Uh, wait a minute. He had a label. Yeah, yeah. He still does. Side One Dummy is yes, his name. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay, that's where I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Very poppy punk label. So you must love that. Yes. yes. You mentioned the Ramones, Chris. I think I've, I've heard before that you're a very big Ramones fan. And yeah. um, I call them bubblegum, actually. So you said bubblegum. To me, they're like a bubble. They do bubblegum pop punk, you yeah. know, don't they? Yeah. Oh, well. yeah, they're totally inspired by like 60s AM radio. And yeah, just great and music. They they have the, they're the greatest cover band ever, too. You know, they've done so many great covers. Um. When, when you guys um, met, because you're both right, um, how did that work out at the beginning? 
Oh, um, you know, it's kind of funny. Like at first, at least for myself, I was like, oh, geez, two. It's like there were like, oh, two lead singers. Oh, two guitar players. Oh, two songwriters. How's that going to work? And it was like, well, wait a minute. Not that I compare us to the Beatles, but like it didn't hurt the Beatles any. Or there's lots yeah. of groups that have that combination. So it's like, well, OK, let's do it. And then it's it's great. I think you know, we, we, our songs are pretty compatible. It's not like somebody's writing something totally different. The other person's like, oh, geez, I don't want to do that. You know, it's like, I think our styles um, mesh pretty well together, even though we write a little bit differently, but I think they go together, you know? They do. Yeah. Did you? So you guys are in that out really early on that you were going to both split the songwriting and the singing and everything? I don't say. know if we, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, that, so. I don't know if, right. Ironed it out is kind of like not really. It just happened. Yeah. We just, just happened. We just went with it, you know. And we both, you know, kind of came in the band with like, you know, an arsenal of songs. Yeah. And it's like, hey, you know, I think we can do the, you know, this one and just kind of went through. And yeah. man, now we have like, 40 songs like over 40 songs and over the pandemic we wrote uh, a brand new album like 15 new songs so we kept working when we could yeah that's awesome um was that was opera the first recordings that you did yeah for yeah yeah for tiger bomb yeah yes. yeah yep. um so todd hutchinson uh in maine that's who you recorded with what and i baby come on was on that record right Yes. I love that song. I played that on the show before. Um, talk to me about what that was like recording that record, the first record for you, first full length album. Uh, well, um, I remember we were, you know, we were talking about recording. We had enough songs for a record and I wanted to check out some, um, uh, you know, uh, record, uh, re studios. record, some studios. Yeah. And um, so I got in touch with Todd and, you know, I remember going over there and checking out the studio and I just loved him. And he was so, you know, like a wonderful guy. And we had just such a great rapport with him. Um, he's one of the most brilliant people I've met in my life. And I'm in a band, with an, another band with him called Crystal Canyon. Oh, so, he's, oh, I'm sorry. I should have put two and two together. That's okay. No, no, no. It's okay. Um, but he just, he's so... Um, amazing to work with you know yeah so, he's a good guy and he knows he knows his stuff so sure does he's been, and very uh detail oriented and cares about what he does so it shows you know he's for sure he's, he's pretty great and he's local so that's good yes right. <laughs> so portland must have been very receptive to the to you guys since chris had it been up there for so long when you first started playing out and, and you put a record out how did you feel about you know being up there and did you feel like you needed to take it on the road and i mean what what was the thought process uh well we were pretty happy like you know playing um new england i guess um chris has toured yeah. before i have definitely toured way too much before so i i kind of like you know being in this area you know like because you're close to boston right. um close to Rhode Island. We played there a few times. Um, and you know, um, it like everywhere, the, the scene fluctuates over the years. So there's going to be clubs that open, there's going to be clubs that close. So, um, right now we're just, you know, there's a few clubs that are open here and we love going down to Boston. That's like our favorite, our favorite place, you know, I did go see the, I did go see Tiger Bomb a few weeks ago, but the band wasn't there. You were there, Linda, yeah. <laughs> which I know that probably bummed you guys totally. out. That, whole, that night was, a, a, oh man, we, we had a lot of fun, you know, but I we went to see two bands that weren't there, you know, it was kind of a, I was really looking forward to Hammered Saint too. Um, yeah. I love all those people. They're, they're great. Yeah. Uh, Kurt, Andy, um, you know, just great people. So yeah, yeah well, hopefully we, we do it some at some point. Did, did you do you have that show rescheduled for Boston? Uh I don't think mm, yet. No, not yet. Um, but one good side note is that we're gonna be opening for the five, six, seven, eights in August. Oh, cool. Woo! I can't is wait. That, I'm very is, excited. Is that in Boston? Fingers no, crossed. it's in Portland. Portland. Fingers nice. crossed. I think we're gonna do it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I love them. Well, love them so much and Shona Knife too of course just love them cool 
Let's talk about Sugar Buzz because you changed your whole plan and you went and recorded with Sir David Minahan, and uh, which is kind of a big change, uh, you know, because Dave to me is more, like he's got more of a like a heavy rock guitar sound and he does record some garage rock kind of bands but he you know he's all over but was it a big change for you working with Minahan and what made you decide to go to Dave other than the fact that he's one of the coolest dudes around of course uh, well I think it's just because we figured he had you know from his days in the neighborhoods and stuff his um his um like uh pop sensibilities like figured like he understands that kind of music and that's what we you know we're going for a certain sound and we thought you know hey let's 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 try him out did yeah. you like working with him uh yes yeah it was different um just the you know the downside um it is quite far from right. Portland. The so, um, you know, we would have to um, keep going back, keep, you know, going down, working on the album, um, which was fine until COVID hit. And mm -hmm. so that put the brakes on that. So what we decided to do was to finish uh, the rest of the album up here. Everything was recorded, um, but we sweetened it up a little bit up here and, and mixed it up here with Todd because we wanted to put it out um so yeah. that's that's how that it was taking a long time just the the pandemic just slowed everything down yeah, it, it did down. what was that in 2021 that you were doing that uh, oh, i think uh, <laughs> yeah i think um yeah we were we were still going down to waltham um early 2020 and then the pandemic hit um so we you know waited oh, that long ago you started okay so you started yeah, yeah. Really this was it was a long time in the making for right. sure yeah. Uh, yeah that must have been frustrating that the pandemic kind of messed up a lot of things up it seems oh. like one big blur now when you look at the last three years like i can't separate oh, i know right. me too me too and yeah. we're just finally kind of getting back to normal but you know there's still a little bit of caution you know i still get cautious when there's a ton of people somewhere, you know, it's just, oh, right. I don't know. It's, it's, it can be scary still, you know? Yeah, it is. Um, did you have a lot of songs to pick from, or did you basically have the songs in mind that you wanted to record for Sugar Buzz when you went to record it? I don't, well, I think like Linda was saying for the first album, we both came with like songs from like previous, you know, just right. writing previously and so sugar buzz everything on there we wrote i i think just about everything we wrote like during you this know time. these this time right yeah so we had pretty much we did i think all this i think everything we were just like okay let's just do another album and like put everything on it and i think that was like most everything we had pretty much yeah, yeah. well at least all the good stuff i mean we don't <laughs> write no filler <laughs> <laughs> right. I know we make it look easy, but you know, we both but is that. Yeah. When you first went down there, did you just set up and play everything live from Minahan and then you just did the oh, track the other stuff later? Is that how you do it in the studio? Uh well it was pretty amazing. Like the first day we were down there, boy, it was a long day. We did 15 we yeah. did the 15 songs, um, you know, the basic tracks in one day. So Jess, the drummer. I mean, she was really kicking butt, like you all got to day. Keep all, you get to keep all the drum tracks? Yeah, and yeah. it wasn't like we just did each song once. We had to do we did it multiple a, times. Multiple times just to get At the right. two or maybe sometimes three times. So mm -hmm. it was like a lot of playing. Yeah, a lot of work. Yeah, but long day. Even yeah. though they're, they're like mostly three minute songs, right? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you gotta play them good you know, like, yeah <laughs> yep so yeah wanted cool. to sound good right oh <laughs> so, yeah the record sounds excellent it. i was listening to the record is fantastic you know you definitely i mean i thought up row was a excellent record too so you guys are very consistent you can tell we're dealing with a pro band here you know that's been around the block a few times so um what are your plans now that the record is out? I mean, did you send it out to a lot of press and radio people? And do you want to like do, I know you're going to Spain and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, but I mean, as far as before that goes, what has been the, the marketing plan? The label is doing everything or? Uh, well, 
it's a little half and half yeah. i guess um, i would yeah i would just say like um a lot of it is like we're kind of do well i don't know if they, how much publicity we've done a lot of publicity like getting letting people know it's out and yeah. um there was like a single right that, yeah um, yes that we a we digital sent single to we tons put out of radio stations right yeah um we did a little uh, online ep got all the stuff up on bandcamp it's my favorite way to put music out there i just i don't like um i don't like spotify and stuff like that bands just don't make anything you, you know? have full control on bandcamp which is good you know right. yes Right. Yes, right, right. And and people, you know, and that's what I love. If if fans want to pay a little more, they can pay what they want, you know, and I think that's totally, totally great um, for bands, because it's not cheap to put out vinyl and uh, recording time. It's just not, you know, so um, yeah, so we, you know, been just trying to get it out there, I've gotten some great press here in New England. Um, and we're really excited for Spain coming up in mm -hmm. April um tiger bomb will be playing and and the brood is our saw that. on one show so uh it'll be great can't wait holly go lightly's uh gonna be there <laughs> i played with her years ago yeah she's amazing yeah so so the brood is playing and um is that gonna uh be diff well i'm sure it won't be difficult for you because you're a pro but you're gonna have to rehearse with two bands for a while is that how you're gonna do it before yeah. you head out there that's, that's what yes that's what i've been doing <laughs> yeah because oh, yeah, it's right around the corner right less than a month away yeah, that's a month. <laughs> I know. it's coming right up whoa uh, i think i heard somewhere that melanie is so has something to do is playing with you guys somewhere or i don't know which band yeah. So um, the promoter who wanted the brood, I had to break the news to him that the brood hadn't been a band since like 2000. And he was like, oh, but he still wanted the brood. So he's like, hey. and then I explained like, you know, how certain members weren't available, either their health or they moved far away and stuff or weren't playing music anymore. So he's like, okay, well, why don't we just put together a super group? You can like, you know, still come. It's like, it's the brood. You wrote the songs, you sing them, you play, just do it. So I was like, oh, all right. I tried to just get him to take Tiger Bomb. And he was like, no, I want the brood. But I was, but then he's like, well, okay, we'll do Tiger Bomb too. Like that. So, um, but so uh, he suggested Melanie from the Pandoras, who like many, many moons ago, the brood had done a show with the Pandoras in Portland. So I have met her like a long time ago, but she, she's great. So yeah, she's going to play the organ. And then nice. uh, Jen D'Angora is going to play bass. You know, Jen from the Shanghai Lows and the Dents. Oh, nice. Really? Wow. Yeah. That is an all-star band. She, she's learning the bass. She's a, she's a trooper. And then wow. Jess from Tiger Bomb is going to drum. So, yeah. In, in probably the weirdest coincidence ever, I am talking to Melanie tomorrow in interviewing her. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. About her very long career, you know, yeah. with the Pandora's leaving trains, tater tots, white flag. She's done so much. The and muffs, I, come on. The muffs, yeah. How could I forget the muffs? My favorite. Yeah, yeah, I think she was what I think she was an original muff, right? When they were a four <laughs> piece when they started. Yeah. Yes, she is. Yeah, so I, I just I just read that and I was like, what a weird coincidence. So so there's not gonna really be any rehearsing with that band right i mean you're just gonna well, well in, in, Sp when you get in there. spain i think we're gonna get a uh, rehearsal in before we play so yeah you know like the day before or something well though they're pros you know jen and melanie i mean that's gonna be easy probably for you yeah. if they listen to the songs before they get there you should be able to play right. if they learn them which one is this no of course they know them yeah so i mean it must be really exciting for you guys you know when you go into spain huh Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. I played there before, but I've, I've not played Mallorca. So it's on my Mallorca Island. Yep. It's, the, um, it's the hip shaking vacation. Yeah. So well, we're not we planning on getting any sleep at all. It's like round the clock <laughs> activities. Go, go lounge till five in the morning, movies and trivia, oh, poolside, yeah. uh, twist parties all day, bands. In it's going to be it's great. Like, yeah. It's there, there's some fans here that are coming um, to Spain that, Nice. Let's know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, why not? Are they Come coming on. on the Tiger Bomb private jet? Uh no, the other private jet. We have our private jet. 
<laughs> so I wanted to ask you guys, what, I mean, what do you guys, are you guys listening to a lot of new music these days or you just go back to the old stuff or? Uh, I've been uh, collecting a little bit more <laughs> vinyl. Um, you, bo you both have you collected. I have a feeling Chris has an enormous, you know, music collection. I'm sure you do too as well, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I love uh, I love getting like the old. Um, I think I just bought a, a Dave. Is it Dave Pike? Uh, like a jazz record from the '60s. Herbie Hancock was on it. Um, and there's a band that I truly love from the early '90s. They're reissuing um, some of their stuff on vinyl, kind of like how they wanted it to sound. They're called Medicine. They're from L.A. Uh, early nineties. Um, and their, their records really influenced me, um, as a younger person and their third record, they just re-released, mixed it how they wanted, did the art how they wanted and put it out. And it's amazing. So, um, it was really cool to get that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So do you, do you mostly just listen to records or do you, do you listen to streaming or anything like oh. that? I'm, I listen to mostly record, vinyl records, and some streaming. But um, yeah, yeah, I love vinyl. Sure do. Yeah. And I'm going to guess that Chris is all vinyl. That's a good guess. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Nothing before 1965. Or, or if, like, if I have <laughs> I mean, a, nothing after my eight track my eight track player, but that's about as modern probably as I get. Is your eight track still working? Well, of course. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. fantastic. I used to love getting the, the Yes albums be, uh, on a track because it would be two, three, you know, the song would take three tracks before it would finish, you know? Yeah, yeah. Click over. Yeah. Yeah, I, I come from the a track era, too. I had an a track player in my car in high school. So, you know, but the when the cassette decks came, we're like, oh, cassettes, man. Yeah, cassettes. But, vinyl's my go-to as well is there been any new stuff at all that you've been listening to chris or do you like mostly like you you're very um, retro right i don't really listen to too much new stuff for new bands um like i like the jackets a lot and of course like muck and the myers are great How can oh you yeah to them right oh, yeah so um i i mean that's pro that's about who i can think of for now i just tend to go you know listen to the older stuff 50s 60s some Is 70s there, but not too much <laughs> yeah you i'm uh, me too i i i actually went to i go to record stores all the time and i just bought a fairport convention oh, record yeah. the other day and it's really weird because i kind of i always thought richard thompson was cool and linda thompson was cool sandy denny but i never really listened to one of their records and i found this 1974 live album of theirs it's incredible yeah. it's, blew my yeah. mind i think i might be getting softer as i'm getting older or something you know because it took me a while to get into the british folk pop scene you know uh, yeah um so um is there anything going on in portland these days as far as the music scene goes i mean is there a lot of bands up there uh, uh it's changing um there's, you know, oh, quite a few bands. Um, there's a, a cool place that opens Suntiki. They have lots of different uh, music, you know, like lots of different bands playing. On a Wednesday night, I saw John Spencer's Hit Makers. Nice. Amazing. So amazing. And it's like right, like 500 feet from my house. So I was going to ask you about touring bands, if touring <laughs> bands were coming through town. So a lot of band touring bands are coming through. More, more so. Yeah. yeah. It's still not like, of course, it's not going to be like Boston or anything, but more and more right. people are discovering Portland's becoming more, you know, known and put on the map. So, right. So and, and it is still kind of tough. Like places are still kind of recovering from the last couple of years. Like some clubs have closed down and not reopened. So it's, it's a little, it's still a little tricky. Yeah. Is Gino still around? Yeah. Yeah, they they are. That's yeah. pretty much the big room up there, right? Uh, well, 
well, yeah, there's a couple, but yeah, I mean, for like, um, you know, punk or rock, you know, it's very, it's a, there's a big metal scene. Yeah, they too. do really good with metal there. Big metal scene. So we're going to be playing there next Saturday with, with Mock Bell and a band called The Sins. Oh, really? So Cowboy Mock's coming up with his That's new right. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Wait. He's a great guy. I'm so happy he's feeling better now after that, after we went through. I know. I know. The he's long great. rock and roll life caught up with him. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, he pulled through and he, you know, he's, he's going to keep doing it. He's ready to rock. Yep. And he's yeah, got like, his books out now. Yeah. Because the Joe good. Perry project is so popular in New England. I'm sure he's going to draw a few people up there, you know, because, yeah. you know, he, he was, Joe Perry's got the the name, the Joe Perry Project, for sure. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks a lot, you guys, for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks, sure. Steve. It was great. And I love the lighting situation and everything, so I can put this on YouTube because it just looks fantastic. You know, I've ruined it on my side of the. the <laughs> Your side looks rocking. Oh. You got the shades and everything going. So, for people thanks. listening, I get to see the good thing. You know. Oh. Yeah, and that light over there is like you know just natural light window, but like it uh, is. yeah, the whole place. Um, I love putting up like Christmas lights and Halloween, and so they don't call it Norm's Den for nothing. I mean, you know, it's the emporium of rock and roll here in Portland. <laughs> it is for sure. Well, I'm honored to have been almost in the emporium, but kind of you know the Zoom version of it. You know, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, you know, good luck. When you go to Spain, that sounds like it'd be fantastic. And with all your future shows and everything, hopefully I'll get to see you guys uh, when you come down here to Boston. Thank you. And, uh, and one more thing. We're going to be hopefully starting uh, recording on our third album this year, hopefully uh, around fall. Yeah. Do you have a plan what you're, where you're going to do the new record? We want to do it with uh, Todd again up here in Portland. Nice. Yeah. So. It's local and he's great. And it's just, um Yeah. A little easier. So, so the first record sounded great, and it sounds like he did a lot of the second record too. So, absolutely, if it's broke, you know, if it's not broke, don't don't fix it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, cool. Well, thanks a lot, you guys. Sure. Thank you, Steve. Thanks. Right. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. Totally. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>